Thanks for joining me today. I am very happy to see you here. When I look at the market, I often use oscillators. There are oscillators at individual stock level. They indicate whether a stock is overbought or oversold. I use those indicators also, not in itself, but as part of trade setups. For example, the box setup, that is a sideways market reversal setup, or double top, double bottom reversal setup, uses one such oscillator, that is the stretch indicator in Q systems. That is for individual stocks. Then I use oscillators at the market breadth level. Those are extremely valuable to decide preferred trading direction. Whenever these oscillators at market breadth level become overbought, I am looking to short. When they are becoming oversold, I am looking to buy. I shared a tweet last week, in fact on Thursday, with some of those breadth oscillators. Let's review the snapshots that I shared in the tweet. I shared the USA market breadth total view and in that we have the percentage of stocks above 50 day moving average that hit, almost hit the oversold threshold from which level a pull up was expected. If you look back and looking back is always extremely valuable because that gives you and me the confidence to trade based on these signals. At this point, the same percentage of stocks above 50 day moving average hit the overbought threshold. And since then you can see the yellow line has continued to calm down hitting almost the oversold level. So some stocks, in fact, a large number of stocks continued to go down once this overbought level was hit. If we look back further, at this point the yellow line had hit the oversold level. Prior to that here also, after that it created a double bottom you might say but the stocks eventually went up. A large number of stocks went up. This oscillator is a slower oscillator and that, that makes it even more potent. And every time, like a clockwork, you can start to buy when it hits the oversold threshold. It, you can start to short when it hits the overbought threshold. And on Thursday, I shared this snapshot. It was very close to the oversold threshold. In this chart, we also have another oscillator, at least one more that I highlighted, that is the three month new high low. This is a much faster oscillator. And this also works like a clockwork. Every time it becomes oversold, you may start to buy Every time it is overbought, you may start to sell. And I showed on Thursday, it was at oversold territory. This oscillator is faster than the percentage of stocks above 50 day moving average. And both of them were oversold on Thursday. That is for the market as a whole, looking at total view. That was not the only breadth chart that showed the market was too oversold. I shared two more snapshots. Let's look at them. The, those two snapshots will be drilling down further from the market breadth total view level. First, I drill down from market to the NASDAQ and NYSE to exchanges 
and here also we can see the percentage of stocks above 50 moving average was nearing the oversold level more so for nasdaq than nyse and as far as three month new high low was concerned both of them were actually at oversold level then i drill down further looked at the individual major indexes dow jones industrials 50 day moving average percentage above that that indicator oversold russell 2000 oversold nasdaq 100 almost oversold s&p 1500 almost oversold s&p 500 almost oversold and if we look at the three month new high low Dow Jones Industrials oversold, Russell 2000 oversold, Nasdaq 100 oversold, S&P 1500 oversold, S&P 500 oversold. That was too oversold and some stocks were very likely to go up. Not all stocks, but some stocks were very likely to go up to release this oversold situation. We will look at this breadth charts at least some of them in this live session and we look at the market as well greetings i am sagar nandi retired it professional swing trading stocks for a living actively trading in the usa and india markets i use only one trading system q systems that i developed myself you may contact me using my email id info at superiorprofit.co or tradingprofitably at gmail.com I regularly share live market as well as stock insights sometimes trading ideas on my website superiorprofit.co there is a forum I share there there is a traders club I share there as well from time to time x handle superior profit and this youtube channel trading profitably when i share a trading idea i try to combine forces from multiple dimensions that is technical analysis market analysis sector industry rotation analysis fundamental analysis and sometimes even seasonality analysis because i do that these trades tend to be really high probability trades and the proof of the pudding is in eating so we'll again this week look at all the ideas that i shared since last market recap and find out how i traded them how they played out these are different q systems that allow me to do the multi-dimensional analysis all the q components run on metastock platform i have already switched to metastock 19 now i should update this slide I am loving Metastock 19 because it allows me to use multiple instances. Those instances can be on multiple monitors where I am at home and where I am traveling. It may be on the same laptop and I may use Alt-Tab to switch between the multiple instances. In fact, when I travel, I do carry a portable monitor as well. So I always have at least two monitors with me. All the components run on Metastock 18, 19 also. And the technical analysis component runs on TraceStation. I also use TraceStation. It is a brokerage platform and I use them as a brokerage as well. Disclaimer, this demonstration is for educational purposes only. I am not an investment advisor. It is not a trade recommendation. Trading involves risk given only you are solely responsible for the outcome of your trades and the profits are also for you. Just like my profits are mine and responsibility for my trades outcomes are mine only. Options trading can be risky and that statement scares many people to go into options trading. On the other extreme, at the other extreme are people who go into options for gambling and that's what makes them risky to use too much leverage inherent in options makes it risky it does not have to be risky i use options but i don't use the risky aspect of options options also provide options 
it can help you diversify your positions it can help you use time decay in your favor it can help you in many ways but only after you know how to use them properly you may refer to the characteristics and risk of standardized options document from OCC to decide if options trading is suitable for you. And as I always say, just reading that document is not going to be enough. You'll have to try options. And I hope you will focus on the risk management aspect first and ignore or not use the leverage much. If you focus on the risk management aspect then you will do all right trading options that's my experience you'll have to find out again if it is suitable for you that was the last slide let's look at the market breadth charts first at least some of them let's look at the market breadth total view the percentage of st stocks above 50 day moving average slightly tilted up since the time I tweeted the snapshot on Thursday. So my timing of starting to buy stocks was as accurate as it could be. It could not be any better than that. The exact day that I posted that the breadth was oversold too much, that was the bottom for the market not for all instruments not for all ETFs not for all futures or indexes but at least for some stocks and we could find those stocks using Q systems also the three month new high low after I tweeted on Thursday it in fact went up again showing that at least some stocks went up my tweet was perfectly timed and the credit does not go to me, credit goes to the systems and my ability. The only credit I have is my ability to trust the systems and let it tell what to do. What it told earlier was that it was risky to buy when the Hindenburgs and Bangos, the irrational exuberant signals came and you know for a long time I was buying some stocks but those were high dividend yield stocks. Some of them I booked profit in like MO Altria. I publicly shared when I bought that, when I sold it and some I am still holding. They are high dividend yield stocks. I have no worry about them going down and me having to stop out. On the other hand, from this time I have also started to short and I again publicly shared some of those ideas. I book profit in some of them. I discussed them in the last market recap. We we'll look at the ones that I shared this week in today's session. It has calmed down. There is no bullishness as far as the candle chart is concerned. That's why I mentioned some stocks were likely to go up, but not all stocks. Obviously, the market has continued to come down since I shared my oversold to it. But some stocks has gone up. We can see both of those from this chart. Now, if I bought on Thursday, started to buy, what kind of stocks would I buy? Some indicators come from this breadth chart. If we look at growth versus value, it started to till down. That means growth was underperforming. I was not going to buy growth. Small cap versus large cap started to tilt up. So small cap was outperforming. I was going to favor small cap, not large cap or mega cap. So if I combine that together, my preferred stocks, at least based on the analysis of this chart, my preferred stock would be a small cap, maybe mid cap and value stock. And those stocks were beaten down a lot. Those stocks would be at extremely low level and some of them went up and I bought some of them. I will not go through the other market breadth charts, but they tell the same story as of Friday's close that the market, some stocks in the market recovered a bit and I bought some of them.
now this is meta stock 19 i am using and i will also point out some changes in meta stock 19 compared to earlier version the custom menu bar is there it was there before also but the buttons in custom menu bar even the built-in buttons can be selected so you may remove some of the built-in buttons you will see that even for the window organization whether it's a tabbed mode a new feature in version 19 or the vertical mode i have kept only these two buttons because these are the only two built-in buttons i use for organizing windows if you click this small down arrow you will have access to all the other buttons similarly for cursor selection and drawing tools you may always click on this small angular arrow and choose which buttons to keep and I keep only the buttons that I use and of course I have a lot of custom buttons I have more than probably many if not all of you because I trade in multiple markets some of the buttons do the same thing but one may be one is actually for USA market one is for India market well that is one change I will try to point out a few changes as I go along let me touch upon this tabbed view that is switched on now that is the new functionality if I switch off it will go back to the MS 18 way of working what does it mean if I apply a template now I'm looking at DXY dollar index using entry chart let's look at the chart first what is it telling it is telling that it is in an uptrend in the last market recap I mentioned clearly that it was not sideways anymore it broke out of the range and it was in an uptrend and since then it has gone up that is what we can see from the daily it is in an uptrend if I want to now apply the weekly template I have it in the custom menu I can click it and you will notice instead of drawing the new chart on top of the daily template it will create a new tab because this tabbed functionality tab button is on so let me apply the weekly template you can see now I have both the tabs it tells me the instrument current price change in price and the interval so I can look at the tab header and immediately know that this is a daily chart and this is a weekly chart same instrument so let's look at the XY weekly it is also in an uptrend this week's candle shape is indecisive but that does not change the uptrend it is in an uptrend and as I always mention if dollar is going up that tends to put pressure on the market so that happened the market came out now once I open these charts in MS 19 if I want to close multiple tabs there are multiple ways of doing it one is to click this close you can see this X button one by one but the easier way faster way is the same that I used in MS 18 also metastock 18 that is go to file close all or use the hotkeys alt F E and notice it did not prompt me to save that is also a subtle change from MS 18 or all previous MS versions at MS for metastock earlier if the charts were not opened using smart chart what does it mean meaning if I went to power console and now it is smart chart I'm using a smart chart but instead of that if I used for example the entry daily template and why don't we open QQQ now I did not open with a smart chart if I want to close it in this version you see I didn't make any change I click the close 
it closes the window it does not prompt me to save whereas in ms18 or all earlier ms versions other than for smart charts if i opened a stock or any symbol using a template chart template it would prompt me to save or not that is a subtle change small change but very useful change let's go back to qqq one way to go back is to go to the recent files and choose qqq from there or i could simply type the symbol let me use this session to explain different ways i am using the latest meta stock that is q global on meta stock so i have opened a chart that is a daily chart of qqq but i want to look at it using weekly daily i have the weekly daily template on custom menu as it was before but unlike before now when i apply the weekly daily template it will actually create a new instance of meta stock and i have noticed for me it op opens the new instance on my primary monitor so let me drag it to this monitor why i am not able to drag let me close this one oh it has dragged here so now i have the weekly daily on a different meta stock instance so what i do in my actual trading i have this weekly daily template or a layout of that always open on one monitor and then i may run scan or other programs on the default instance you can see at the bottom the default the initiate initial instance of meta stock is named main if i apply a multi chart template it creates a new layout layout one layout two and so on so that is one layout i keep on a second monitor here i created layout two by clicking on apply template but in real life i don't do that because in real life i have a layout let me see i have enough resources to open that layout during this session yes and let me change the symbol just like in other versions of meta stock i can simply type the symbol it will change all the charts in the layout and i want to explain one thing why i keep this at a glance instance always running on one monitor so you may drag and drop it on another monitor again at the bottom you can see the default main monitor main instance and then my at a glance layout now in this at a glance layout it is a tabbed view you know that from the tab being on here highlighted and on the left i have the weekly on the right i have daily but on the right you can see i have again additional tabs under the tabbed view what are they and let me explain the beauty of this i have the backdrop weekly and entry daily as usual in previous versions of q global on metastock 18 or on q elite on trade station but for the other usual templates i use for example the resistance support we refresh the data template it is in the second tab now and in the ms19 version of q global i have added this kind of volume profile how to use them once this version is released this tend to be kind of magnetic areas magnetic price levels wherever we have the peak volume what does it mean actually it's like volume profile so we have different volumes at different price levels or volume at price plot in fact it is using volume at price plot indicator that's an indicator in ms19 wherever we have peak price those are usually areas where price tend to go to but that is not part of my trading system that helps me identify possible support resistance areas 
so I have that resistance support chart on the second tab and on the third tab because I have access to the additional momentum signals I have the third tab so whenever I look at a symbol I simply change that symbol and I have all the charts I usually use I have additional Q global charts but I don't use them all the time like volatility intraday etc I may use control tab you can see how it changes from here to here to here and in fact it will go to weekly also as I press control tab did I press weekly actually when you press or I press control tab it shows the different instances I can go to the weekly my cursor is on weekly now press again go to the daily first chart then press again go to the second chart go to the third chart so I can easily navigate between the views that I am interested in when looking at the symbol so I am finding that very useful that's why this at a glance layout is always running on one monitor you could add more tabs if you wanted to if you wanted to put the intraday pivot tab you could add that easily it is on my custom menu so all I need to do is press that template you can see another tab is created with the pivot chart but I am not talking too much about day trading here so let me close that that was another large enhancement in Metastock 19 the tabbed view and the multiple instances running on different monitors so I'm using them very effectively let's go back to the market analysis QQQ I shorted QQQ and publicly talked about it long time ago somewhere here probably when the Hindenburg started appearing in market breadth and I booked profit already and after that it fell again that's fine I booked profit in the trade it was already oversold and it was near potential support so I have no regret I always follow my system that gives me enough profit to live my humble life in Thailand so anyway I shorted it probably perfectly time could not be better than that I could not do better than that I book profit it came down again this is now the worst performing market ETF that's a big change from being the best performing market ETF to being the worst performing market ETF and there is no sign whatsoever that the drop is going to stop not for QQQ there is no support nearby volume was very high over last three days down volume and in fact it is falling for four successive weeks very large bearish shape bearish color weekly candle and daily is continuing to go down 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 relative performance is sharply coming down underperforming the market nothing in this chart is bullish I am not going to buy any instrument that looks like this what about SPY I'm going to change the symbol let me drag it to my other monitor it will change all the tabs on both left and right hand side this is SPY looks very similar to QQQ and both of these are heavily influenced by the mega caps sharply coming down in daily and weekly both nothing tells me that I can buy very bearish there is no support in daily nearby but weekly has a potential support QQQ didn't have any you may see that it fell for three successive weeks and on the daily chart it fell for six successive days has not happened for a very long time now let me show you 
the value of the new resistance chart there is no support level visible here I didn't look at it using the resistance support let's look at it and there is no support in the resistance support using the volume profile as well let's go back to QQQ also it, it's very useful to see if there is possible support meaning congestion area in the volume profile or volume at price no there is none for QQQ as well then comes dia well let's go to that this chart is looking very different weekly has found support at the same direction line where SPY is now so SPY may find support there next week we'll have to see but here it has found support because it has created a false downside breakout and daily is holding very well for the whole week you may see in the weekly chart is practically unchanged for the week very small change how much small change you can actually read it from here only 0 0.07 points very small change for the week creating a base in daily and has a bear release signal so, sorry not bear bull all bullish signals are green bull release signal in daily and relative performance is sharply going up outperforming the market so between these three market ETFs or market pockets you may say because we have Q index to do the constituent analysis if I was looking to buy I would buy dia constituents that is industrial stocks and those are not necessarily all manufacturing stocks but dia constituents how we go to Q index and just type the index it will do a constituent analysis but before that it needs to sign me in signing to definitive you can see now I am online and it is retrieving data from Refinitiv. it has retrieved the constituents and this is a useful graph advanced decline over one month for Dow Jones industrials very bearish above 10 day that is also long term one month and 10 day are long term for my swing trading they are bearish but this week that is medium term is slightly bullish but for practical purposes let's say it is neutral whereas two day and even more than that one day both are bullish so very clearly using these visual graphs we can see industrials are turning from bearishness to bullishness and I would like to focus on buying some of those stocks and when I came here I noticed one stock here UNH why I noticed that because that is one stock I tweeted about and it will be a good point to divert to UNH because one point of these market recaps is to show how the signals are working based on real life examples not sharing ideas after the fact but talking about Q trades before knowing the results and see how they played out and UNH was one that I shared publicly on my X page Twitter page this was the last market recap tweet after that I shared one more stock Hayat I'll come back to that then I shared on April 16th let's look at it very interesting you will find probably because all these are analysis shared before knowing the results this is on April 16th I'm sharing in the morning session what am I sharing some useful and in my experience extremely reliable Q patterns that is this stock was at price extreme low and at price extreme low it was jumping down 
jumping down with more and more acceleration so jumping down faster and faster shown by jump thrust indicator price extreme low jumping down more all of a sudden came big move up three if the stocks fundamental is strong almost always the stock goes up after that it may pull back little bit but eventually it will go back up that's my experience for most of the time again the fundamentals have to be strong why because this pattern has a meaning when at a low price level it was going down more and more low price to going down more and more somebody stepped in and bought a lot of stocks those will not be people like me those will not be retail traders those would be very large funds or very high net worth individuals who bought a lot of stocks in a solid downtrend to change the downtrend to at least break the downtrend breaking the trend line resistance even if it comes down probably they would like to buy more this level tends to hold the level from which the big move up the parent of all bullish momentum came so i shared it at that time incidentally Incidentally, there was a bullish headwind just one day earlier. And this gap happened to be, gap up happened to be after earnings. If you did not want to buy before earnings, could I buy before earnings? Yes. And that's the advantage of learning to trade options. Before earnings, I would not buy the stock itself because that would be undefined risk strategy but i will be comfortable with trading verticals specifically short put vertical where volatility would crash after earnings that would be in my favor and the stock goes up that delta move would also be in my favor on the other hand if it goes down after earnings volatility crash would still be in my favor and i would make some loss from delta move but in any case it would be a defined risk strategy so before earnings i'm perfectly okay to trade a stock using verticals those are defined risk strategies if you did not do that if i did not do that then we could move to intraday pivot chart after the gap up move happened and try to take a very low risk entry somewhere here probably on this green candle in fact i traded both i traded one position before earnings had a nice profit in that close the trade and i watched the intraday chart i took another position using intraday chart for that day i put the stop here so that was then even h fundamentals were in fact quite good i would not go into that what happened to UNH after that? Let's use Q Elite on trade station so that trade station is not unhappy with me. Beautiful, isn't it? And in my trading jargon, beautiful has to be translated to profitable. Jump thrust low price extreme low came big move up three this gap up move since then prices continued to go up so both those trades i took ended up with a profit and i tweeted here so if you consider starting point from there though we saw qqq spy heavily came down though we saw the dia dow jones industrials did not move was unchanged practically unchanged but this stock using the beautiful pattern and a fundamentally strong stock did pretty good and that is how i started buying stocks this was one example i shared it publicly so i diverted to it by looking at the dow jones industrials constituents and there is every reason to look to buy stocks in dow jones industrials now also well, let's go back to
dia from where I diverted into index analysis and then went to United Health, a profitable swing trade. The weekly daily is showing that it has found some support. Bull release has come. And in fact, for last two days, it is going up. Little, but it has closed higher and higher for last two days. And both of those days were also with above average volume shown by the thicker volume lines. It would be nice to look at the, I just press control tab to move to the next chart to see if there is any support from volume profile. Not really. This was a congestion area, came down from there. The next high volume support level is here. So we don't have any support from volume profile here as well, but the chart is looking much stronger than QQQ and SPY. By the way, it would not be useless to look at the percentage drop from the top to the bottom. Let's use the weekly chart easier to draw the percentage plot. And this percentage plot is an addition to the new Metastock release. Immediately shows me the percentages change from the top. It's 5.7%. So not a huge drop by any means. Just 5.7% from the top. And if we wanted to know from this bottom what was the up move, that was 23.7. So let's say 23%. From 23% up move, it just came down less than 6%. That is very normal. Well, let's go to delete this. Let's go to QQQ, which looks more bearish than SPY. See what is that drop? Dia dropped by less than 6% from the top. And QQQ from the top, again using the weekly chart, dropped by 8.4. So still not even a drop by 10%. How much was the up move? It went up and up and up. Let's see, even from here if I draw, 77%. So this drop is actually nothing compared to the up move that we had and I never buy, almost never buy overbought market. I stopped buying at the right time, it has dropped. Again, QQQ is looking very bearish, but the 10% or about so drop is nothing unusual. What about IWM? What is the drop from the top? I think when my screencast or this YouTube live channel is running, sometimes the screens are flickering that does not happen in my normal trading okay can live with that yet the drop from the peak for IWM is 9.3 percent and it was moving inside a weekly box for a long time okay so less than 10 percent drop in QQQ IWM both dia less than that here, IWM has found nice support at the white direction line. Weekly is still very bearish, but daily has found support and on Friday price went up. Relative performance outperformed. Remember what we saw in market breadth total view, that small cap was outperforming since Thursday. So I would like to buy that and here also I see that it has found nice support IWM so that is also in support of buying small cap stocks or you could buy industrial stocks as well 
or uh, not industrials necessarily, but Dow Jones industrials constituents. Not still looking too bullish, isn't it? And that is expected. Market was so oversold. It was moving in a downtrend. It is moving in a downtrend in the daily chart for all the market ETFs. A downtrend does not change into an uptrend in two trading days. But the downtrend will stop someday and it will start to move up for DIA and IWM. It has stopped going down at least. But still the charts are not bullish yet. That is at the market level. Before the market will start to go up, individual stock stocks will start to go up from support. And those are the kinds of stocks I bought. Even H was one of them. What about few other ideas that I shared? Let's go back to the Twitter sharings. In the last market recap, I shared this stock on April 13. I had a market recap in that I shared this stock, Hayat. And I think that was the only bearish stock that I shared in that. Market recap. Let's look at Hayat now. H is the ticker symbol. I shared the analysis on this day. On this day. I mentioned in the market recap I did not have a short position but I identified the trade and next day price opened higher. That was good for me and that is what I tweeted. I was already ready with the idea. I did the 360 degrees analysis. I did the 360 degrees analysis in the market recap on on Saturday. <laughs> it's taking time. Twitter is slow sometimes. No problem. I don't know. I can try again one more time. What I did because it opened higher on Monday. That was good for me. I switched to intraday pivot chart took a precise entry using intraday pivot chart. Yes, it is here now. So this is pivot intraday chart and you may see I'm using Metastock 19. I have tabbed few. Same stock with multiple templates. This was the open up on Monday. This was Friday's close. Then it created the early range and broke below early range low. I took a short trade here. For the day, my stop was just above early range high. You could put stop just above this level also. I put it above early range high. In either case, it would not never be approached also. It fell sharply. You could book partial profit if you wanted to or if it was a swing trade, you could simply hold on to the trade using the daily stop loss. I held on to the trade and later on when I had enough profit, I booked the profit in the trade. So I closed my bearish trade in Hayat with a nice profit. Again, a trade idea that I shared before taking the trade and before knowing the results. So two out of two trades that I shared, United Health long side, Hayat short side, both were profitable. Why not we look at the Twitter feed? Let's see what else other stock I shared during the week. Is the market recap going up? Hayat, Hayat. This is QQQ, market analytics go up. United Health, I already covered that. United Health, okay, NTRS. NTRS and CDMO. Let's look at CDMO first, then I will come back to NTRS and that's it. Those are the stock ideas. CDMO. I was looking at that stock because it was looking 
very interesting to me interesting has to be profitable if the patterns played out CDMO in daily chart you can see the daily interval here was inside a triangle pattern for a very long time and it was trying to break out in the morning session and I shared it in the morning session 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time CDMO if it had a break out I would have bought the stock look at the weekly the weekly also was inside a triangle pattern it was moving sideways for a long time also interestingly it was at price extreme low jump thrust low in weekly of course it came big move up three it was moving sideways it was then breaking out of the weekly trend line resistance also so those were looking interesting to me if it broke out by the close I would have bought the stock so that's what I shared in the initial tweet it did not close above the trend line resistance and I followed up with a tweet if I did not follow up you would have your queue systems you would know what to do if it did not break out instead it came down closed inside the trend line resistance support closed inside the triangle pattern so there was no trade setup and queue traders would not take the trade so there was a possibility of a breakout but it didn't confirm so one would not take the trade following trading rules is important then the other last stock that I shared was a bearish trade in NTRS let's look at the snapshots always good to look at the snapshots that I shared at the time of analysis before looking at the live charts as of today because we have to know what was the basis of the analysis that must make sense And if it makes sense, it will work out over hundreds of trades. This is NTRS. I'm sharing it on April 16th. April 16th. Night time. Okay. The stock was down by almost 5% majority of PR stocks 55% were down financial stock asset management and custody bank you can see here and here the earnings growth was sharply coming down yes it was still positive but sharply coming down you can see here and here revenue growth was also sharply coming down and turned negative valuation was medium it was steadily coming down and earnings was just one day earlier I am sharing it on April 16th earnings oh, okay on the same day earnings was on the same day so it came down after earnings I looked at the industry scorecard that was weak heavily down somewhat decelerating you can see the deceleration from the heat map of the score also so the industry allowed me to short and technically it had a very nice breakdown below trend line support and here we have the reverse pattern it was at price extreme high jump thrust high then after earnings we have to keep that in mind after earnings it came down with big move down three so it could go up but if the fundamentals are weak and I think it is weak because of reversing earnings and revenue growth I expect it to come down what happened to the stock after I shared it NTRS let's look at that the more you share your trades like this publicly if you are able to do that in some way with your friends or trading trading partners or trading groups you will build confidence it may help others 
but it will help you the most. That is my experience. I shared the trading idea on this day. Let's go back to the template with historical trend line. So I shared the idea based on this breakdown. Sorry, this breakdown. And it was because of earnings. It was a huge drop. Of course, the stop would be very far if you use the usual stop level. Maybe you could put it here. You would not probably put it here. You could put the stop level here, at least above the high of that day candle. That would be very far for my style. If I traded stocks for shorting, I could still alter the number of shares to have defined an uh, usual risk in a particular trade usual dollar risk in a particular trade but still the distance was too high for my liking and also as is not uncommon after such a huge drop a stock would like to go up and often not always but often it will stop at the extension of the trend line that was already broken and exactly that is what happened here it did go up that is very usual and it stopped at the extension of the trend line support that was broken. It is likely to come down. Not guaranteed, but likely. And if it gives me a red candle now, I would not mind taking a shot because there the stop will be very narrow, unlike the stop one would apply at the time of earnings drop. So I am keeping an eye on the stock. Did I trade it? Actually, I traded it. I shorted it on this day. Small position. And then during the last few days, I had a small profit, very small profit in the trade. I actually closed it. The market was oversold. I was starting to take bullish trade. So I closed it. However, I will keep an eye on the stock. Why not we look at its industry strength? That will be a good good insight to have that I am buying some stocks, but is this industry getting bullish? If so, then I would not like to short NTRS in the coming week. Even if it is coming down, I would not like to trade against the industry. Let's look at it. 360 degrees analysis chart we already saw. Based on my chart analysis, if it gives me a flow short setup next week, I'll be happy to short it. Why so? Because it gave me that pattern that does not fail usually, especially if it is in a weak fundamental, weak industry stock. So let's find that out. Find out what? Find out that my bearish view that I shared in the stock during the week is that bearish view still valid. Okay, this not index. I want to go to stock. I love to look at the market using these visual analytics. You can probably see that during my sessions. And they end up giving me some profit as well. That's the nice thing about trading. If you know how to do it, it's not difficult. It takes some discipline. It takes a lot of discipline, in fact. But once you discipline yourself, it's actually quite easy. Keeping in discipline is always the biggest task in my experience. The technical aspect, fundamental industry strength, those come easily using the systems. Discipline is something we have to have inside us that is not in the systems. Well, the earnings growth, revenue growth are coming down. They don't change every day. That allows me to short, but I can see now 80% of PR stocks went up on Friday. What happened on Friday? SPY, QQQ heavily fell. Dia was unchanged. IWM slightly went up, but with an indecisive shape daily candle, yellow color also, if you remember. But I see this industry, 80% of peer stocks went up. That does not 
support a short but I will like to confirm that with the industry score from QH asset management custody bank the industry is still weak so I would not mind keeping an eye on the stock the industry is still weak and this is relative score you can see on Friday the industry did go up but not much and relative score is what is important when I'm looking at it it is still relatively weak industry therefore if the stock comes down next week maybe Monday maybe Tuesday and probably I'm hoping that PR stocks will also come down keeping the industry weak then I would not mind taking a shot so I will keep this stock in my list Hayat I remove I already closed that trade NTRS I took a shot using intraday charts I closed it because the market was oversold I will not short it now because you can see the candles both in weekly daily does not allow me to short the shapes and the colors but if the daily comes down now with a bearish flow we already have bearish backdrop in weekly so a bearish flow in daily will give me a flow trend following short setup I would not mind taking that industry is still relatively weak fundamentals are weak so I saved it in my trade station those were the only trades that I shared during the week and all seem to do all right now let's look at few other market angles yes I spent a lot of time looking at the stocks that I shared last week I think that is valuable to build confidence on the system I would like to go back to few more market angles to conclude why I am looking at buying some stocks look at the technical breadth weekly interval first this was very bearish last week but now it is mixed slightly bearish but for practical purposes let's say it's neutral and if we look at reversals most of the reversals are actually bullish so what kind of stocks I am looking to buy those were very oversold starting to go up that matches this technical breadth pattern in weekly and if I look at Friday's technical breadth not only the reversals are hugely bullish again that is the kind of stocks I am looking to buy but overall all categories even strength even continuation all categories actually it is bullish so though QQQ SPY came down and others market ETFs DIA was unchanged IWM slightly went up we can see several stocks actually had a nice up move or at least some up move the technical breadth allows me to buy and I would like to look at one stock but before that look at the sector industry stock breadth this picture allows me to buy and remember in the last market recap I showed this was all red and I mentioned all I needed was a green in real time or one day period to look at oversold stocks value stocks probably that is favored now small caps probably that is favored now start to buy and that is what I did now one and two day that is over Thursday Friday and Friday market went up market not everything but some stock five day is still bearish that is fine I'm looking to buy stocks at a very low price and let me share at least one I don't have enough time to share more and it is not a trading idea trading tip session it is a session to learn to apply a discipline disciplined approach to trading let's look at this stock IGT just one look at the scorecard and if you were me you would like to buy the stock at least as far as fundamentals are concerned just now I showed a stock NTRS where earnings growth revenue growth were sharply coming down here it is the opposite earnings growth revenue growth are sharply going up 
very high earnings growth to 75 percent in the last quarter undervalued stock however you look at it a short squeeze potential and a box stock non-negligible I may add when you say bo box stock when you see box stock not to be ignored a box stock is not to be shorted usually usually but this is undervalued stock with high growth box stock short squeeze potential coming up over five days two days one day earnings is some distance away even pays a nice dividend not extremely high but nice dividend of almost 4%. Let's look at its industry. The industry score is weak, but in Q, we have a unique way of identifying strength in the industry that is using acceleration, and it is one of the top 20% most accelerating industries. Casinos and gaming allows me to buy allows me to buy confidently in fact I am very fond of turn around candidates be it in terms of industry like this be it in terms of fundamentals like this here or like this here these are turn around in terms of fundamentals earnings growth or revenue growth revenue growth here turn around in earnings growth here or technicals let's look at technicals IGT and I already took a position in the stock you will see the patterns my techniques they play out in mirror image fashion fundamentals great nice dividend even industry accelerating and this stock is following the industry it is sharply down in weekly chart sharply down in daily chart then what happened it came to price extreme low sharply coming down at price extreme low then somebody or some people or some group stepped in with heavy buying as is not uncommon it tried to scare some people away with a false downside breakout and on friday closed with a bullish shape candle Prior to that, we had a bullish indecision. Prior to that, we had a bull release. Stop loss is very narrow. And it has a decent dividend yield, about 4%. If you thought that was enough, you would not probably apply the stop. And because it is at a very low price level, you could also use short put, naked short put, if you were willing to hold it longer term in case you are assigned hold it long term how maybe based on the dividend and maybe based on the other fundamentals i did not use short put i used the stocks i bought a position in the stock it has a false downside breakout in weekly also let's look at the volume profile in the resistance support template i bought here at the double bottom about to break out of this channel line using the watermark support i will using my style uh, using the q guidelines i'll book partial profit along the way so if this is my entry this is my stop maybe somewhere here as soon as the risk distance is covered i am ready to book at least partial profit then i may try to watch it to move to either the yellow direction line or the channel line or maybe the white direction line and the trend line resistance these trend lines work very well and why i came here i am doing this live this trend line resistance will be a place where i like to close the entire remaining position that is also because the volume profile has a peak of the entire chart at this point that is a congestion area congestion areas are profit booking areas therefore if i am still holding partial position i often do not i often book my profit before that once i have reasonable profit relative to the risk but if i am still holding the stock when it comes to this resistance which is at the volume profile peak i will like to close the entire position and i 
I could demonstrate a nice use of the volume profile, volume at price plot that I have on this Metastock 19 chart. That was today's session. I explained how the trades I shared in a probably very difficult market condition, both on the long side, both on the short side, worked beautifully for me. I hope you could also benefit from the Q trades like that using your own analysis. Those were not the only stocks I traded. I traded many other stocks and this week also I closed my account with a profit. That is what I always say. That is what these live examples are meant to show. There is no reason not to do that. Trade profitably and I hope to see you in my next session in the next week. Thanks once again. Have a great weekend.